and welcome back to Sinkwit Sara and I am so excited to be filming this video today because I realized it is one of my like most requested videos because I was going through my commerce video about 11th grade that I made a bit ago and I realized that so many comments were about why I took applied maths, should they be taking applied maths and just stuff like that. I'll be sharing my personal opinion, my personal experience and be giving you some like uh, factual information that I think I would have really appreciated when I was taking applied maths with commerce. I scrolled and scrolled and scrolled through YouTube to find something similar to this and no one has done this before. Like uh, yeah, physics wala and people like that have but it's really not the same as a student who is already in plus two talking about this. So yeah, let's just get started. Hi, your video did not glitch. It's me who paused it because short little disclaimer. I am a math student and I do not know about the full scope of any other subject so I'll only be speaking from one perspective. So if you want to know about it, go to your research. I'm just a maths girly. Okay, sorry, continue. Now, long story short for all those people who haven't taken commerce or are not in commerce and that is there has always been this great debate surrounding commerce and what should you take as your fifth subject? Like should it be maths or should it be IP? And I've heard some schools offer entrepreneurship, psychology as your fifth subject. I am all for taking whatever you want to study, whatever you're interested in, but I'm here to give a reality check and not sugarcoat things. And this is all that I've learned through my own experience and through the experience of my own classmates. So like, do not come at me. Before I get into the debate of maths or no maths, I would just like to say that many people, I dare say most people take commerce trying to escape maths like you know they did not want to take science because it was too much maths and they do not want to take arts because that won't be acceptable so they take commerce and that is really the worst mistake you can do because the moment you take commerce you're getting into a lot of maths because you're only studying about money and how can it not revolve around maths I have taken applied maths and in my class 50% of the class had taken IP and the other 50 applied maths and if you know then you know almost always the scale is tipping towards maths because that is where the most number of people are and that is why I think I have a pretty unique stance and like neutral stance. Uh, we would discuss a lot about this in class and that is what future do you have with IP in commerce. So right now we're not talking about maths we'll solely talk about IP and the truth is there is a lot that you do not know but you cannot do with IP when you've taken commerce and uh, to begin with you cannot pursue IP as a subject in the future or computer as a subject in the future like you cannot pursue computer science and all that along with that when we bring maths into the equation we had this CUET counseling in our school and we were told that to to give the entrance tests of all the subjects that you need to for CUET you actually cannot do without maths if you if you want to get into BCom and if you want to do eco honors, which is one of the basic things that one wants to do one, once they've taken commerce. You can do BBA, but I researched, I did my full research and I got to know from my friend whose brother has taken BBA, is that there is a lot of applied maths in it and you'll just be missing out on your basics when people from applied maths background will know what's going on. Like CAT and so many thousand other exams that you can want to give also require maths. Not only that, if we talk about chartered accountancy, which is a very common thing like commerce students want to do, then even that requires maths. But why would you think about the future? Let's remove that. Let's talk about college. Then almost every other in entrance exam in IP mat, JIP mat, even they require you to sit for a basic maths paper. And I really don't mean to dishearten anyone who has already taken IP. And this was all that you cannot do, but there is so much that you can do. You should do your research on that. But since I have taken applied maths, I'll obviously be talking about the pros of it. Comma students earlier had to study the same maths that the STEM students were studying, which was so stupid because I would never ever need it again. And they would actually have to study the applied maths topics separately along with core maths. Trust me on this, if your school is offering applied maths, then run and take it. You don't even have any idea how beneficial it's going to be for you. It might not seem like it, but trust me, it will be. But if you're being offered core maths, then maybe that is something you want to think about because they are two different things. 
So if you plan on not pursuing commerce in the future, what I mean to say is that you've taken commerce, but you don't plan on going forward with it, like you're going to do something like culinary or fashion designing and stuff like that, then what are you even doing? Make your life easier by taking IP or any other subject that you're being offered. Why would you take it? Because maths takes effort, it takes effort to even pass in maths, to even get passing marks. To get into my favorite segment, which is my journey with maths, it sounds so much like my journey with cancer, they're not that far apart. Very honestly, am I good at maths? No, I'm not. But have I ever regretted taking maths? No, I haven't. If there is any right decision that my indeci indecisive self made, then it is of having taken maths. And irrespective of how badly I've done in every test and every exam, I'm not going to lie, I've always really enjoyed studying what I am studying because um, even though maths is beneficial separately and after school, but when you take maths with commerce, then you have this other level of understanding because we are studying financial maths. And then after studying that, when you study accountancy and economics and you see the similarity in some of the topics that you studied here and now that you're studying there, you definitely understand way better. To answer the question that I know so many of you all watched this video for, and it is, is applied maths easy? You know, will it be okay for a person who has always been average at maths and will they be able to survive it? Very honestly, without sugarcoating, no, it's not easy at all. But the thing is that so many of your friends and so many of my friends, you know, who maybe took arts because they thought that was the easier option are also complaining today because they have to go through a different kind of art. They have to learn a lot and they have to write a lot of notes. And the thing is, nothing comes easily. You have to work hard for everything. So you might as well take something that is difficult and work hard for it and then gain a lot from it. Like, why wouldn't you just take the better option? And applied maths is that in this case. Do you need coaching or tuition or any guidance for applied maths or maths? And unless you got 100 in 10 boards, you will, okay? Because obviously it gets tougher in plus two. And I take tuition for maths, but I know so many people who prefer coaching. So they take coaching for every subject, but then they also take tuition at home for maths because maths does require more of a, you know, one-to-one -one connection with your teacher. I think I've talked a lot and you get what I'm trying to say, don't you? I actually recently have come up with a lot of nice commerce video ideas, which I do think I will be putting up. But if you like the video, then comment down below. If you want me to do a commerce related video, then also comment down below. If you have any doubt queries, also comment down below. And till then subscribe, like, share and comment and see you guys next time. Bye.